everyone and welcome along to round number four of the squad sprint season. We've arrived at the magnificent, the legendary Spa Francorchamps circuit for 14 laps of incredible action. I'm Ginger Andy and once again joining me we've got the brilliant George Morgan. Welcome George. Andy, always a pleasure and I've got to say we're really looking forward to this fascinating race. Spa Francorchamps, fixed setups, one stop mandatory, soft tyres as always, but this circuit is certainly something special. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be brilliant. Tom Martin is, of course, winning in Silverstone. Since then, the eSport man, James Baldwin, has come roaring back, winning two on the spin. Who will come out on top here in Belgium as we hit the halfway stage of the season? It will be four races down after this one and four to go. Let's look at the grid. It's the All-Stars at the front this week. It's Thibaut Courtois on pole with Louis Delatraz in second. Alex Gillen starts from third with Steve Brown making his debut in the series from P4. Niren starts in fifth with Nathan Teig alongside in sixth. Seventh on the grid is Danny Beresny. He's joined by Simon Weigang on row four. Barry Burman starts from ninth and Maxine Byman rounds out the top ten. P11 is Hayden Gullis, Tom Martinez in P12, Andrea Kaposha in P13 with Yaroslav Honzik P14, Eamon Murphy P15 with Danny Moreno P16, Bono Huis P17, Tobin Lee P18, Emily Jones P19 and James Baldwin rounds them off in P20. Well, what a circuit this is. It really is an absolute classic. One of the very best on the calendar. Just a quick note then on some driver changes. Steve Brown in for Aravik Quadrant. Uh, Andrea Capoccia is in ahead of Yeshish Manohar uh, in the Yasit. And of course, Mercedes are running two-legged today with no Jarno Otmir in the team. But what a circuit this is, George. Oh, it's tremendous. I mean, just speaking of the corners like Le Saw, so Rouge, you've got Malmedy Le Com, you have Bruxelles, not to mention Le Farnier, Campus Stavolo, Paul Frere, Blanchemont, and the bus stop chicane, it's going to be a corker. It sure is. One of the longest circuits in Formula One. Uh, the longest. One of the longest on this calendar as well as we get ready for the lights out. It's round four in squad sprint and we are go. It's Timo Courtois leading them away from pole position on the run down to turn one. As uh, they go into the first car, we've got Carnage behind. Two Yas Heat cars off and in the wall. A Veloci car in there as well as Nathan Teague has been a flying start. Delatraz was really wide and he's losing ground as they go up the hill. Nathan Teague attacking the Real Madrid goalkeeper. Timo Courtois side by side through a rouge and Nathan Teague takes the place and starts into the lead, now side by side they go, up through the Camel Strait, down towards the Com. so many cars slipstreaming side by side, down towards the braking zone, look at that, who's that coming alongside, it's Alex Gillen on the charge, going right round the outside of Nathan Teig, and he's past Courtois, his teammate, now he's past Teig, and he's up and into the lead of this race, incredible start George. Indeed, and another all-star car in the background going off the track. It's been a very, it's been a tale of two halves, really, as we run on board with Tom Martinez, who's currently looking upon Barry Burrowman, who makes a slight error as they make their way around no-name corner. They're going to make this little short stretch now down towards Puon, and still, we've seen these cars trying to sort themselves out. Here comes a little tap there from an Alfa Romeo as we see Danny Moreno swooping down the inside, but just look at this, Danny, Danny Berezne just stuck in behind there, Danny Moreno heads around the the next right hander of this next uh, chicane certainly around Paul Frere and then looking tremendously dynamic Perez they manages to go through in behind as well you've got Danny Moreno trying to fend off the approach of the ass heat car but it's been a tremendous first lap then there's Barry Burmand all over the rear end and they've just got alongside each other he is um, currently alongside Thibaut Courtois who's really dropped down there yeah, action plenty. Courtois under pressure. Also under pressure is Steve Brown on his debut. Side by side and down the inside goes Tom Martinez and he's going to take that place. Continuing to show great form in the squad sprint. He's gone past Steve and he's now fancying a look at the Real Madrid goalkeeper as they go across the start finish line and onto the next lap. It's Alex Gillen that leads them then from Nathan Take second as we see Martinez down the inside on Timo Courtois and taking the place away. So Tom Martinez already up into fourth. Courtois down to fifth and he's now going side by side again on another lap two laps in, two side by side moments almost into a rouge for Thibaut Courtois he's right in the thick of it here as they climb the hill now, through the Kemmel Street once again, we're going to go three wide potentially down the street, it's Courtois it's Martinez, it's Brown, Brown through the middle, we've got on the left uh, uh, Martinez, he drops behind them both they've both got the speed in the straight and Brown is up to fourth and Courtois back down to sixth as Martinez gets him down at Lecom, incredible stuff 
God, someone needs to tell these guys to chill as we're now seeing on the inside. Danny Berezny gets another move, this time on Thibaut Courtois. And he's really rapidly rising himself up the order as well as they round no-name corner. The Alfa Romeo's done a sterling job. But once again, Thibaut Courtois at the mercy of yet another Alfa Romeo. We ride on board with Simon Weigang as they round through Puan And running a little bit wide, Thibaut Courtois. You can't afford to run over the curbs too much despite them being quite flat here at Spa. You could still drop yourself into real deep trouble as we're now witnessing Danny Moreno. Oh, he cuts the corner there, heading around the double right. In, or, the, or certainly the chicane, and it's allowed Bono Huiz to go through, as well as Jaroslav Honzik. Drama in the first couple of laps here, and I have to say, Andy, it certainly looks like it's going to be a really trem tremendous encounter this time. Yeah, what a start to this race. I, I thought we were going to have a Giovinazzi George Russell moment there because that was so close. Yaroslav Honzik nearly being collected there by the sliding Danny Moreno as we now see two cars side by side still. Who's that? Courtois going backwards again. We've got Vigang going round the outside into the bus stop and he makes it stick. Simon Vigang then up into seventh place. We've got Danny Beresny just in front of that in sixth. It's action of plenty, but still Alex Gillen for the All Stars leads this race with Nathan Teig up in second. Great start for those guys. Uh, they're still running at the front. Courtois, though, going backwards and under pressure again as we now switch to Nathan Teague from the rear wing of that quadrant car. And he's under real pressure here because here comes Barry Burnamand. He's on the attack down the straight. He's got plenty of slipstream and he pulls alongside and he breezes past down the straight as they all fan their way out down that camel straight. It's still Gillen in the lead. Burnamand up to second. Nathan Teague drops to third, but it's another respectable performance from the quadrant man. Yeah, I was just about to say, Quadrant as a team performing in this race, two cars in the top five already from the get-go. We spoke about Nathan Take previously, of course, several decent performances here in Squad Sprint this season, and he's doing it all again here, uh, certainly here at Spa. Currently lying in P3 after Bar Barry Burramand uh, let fly at him, heading up through Le Com, and it'll certainly aid the Alfa Romeo team as well. Both teams, I think, have driven so respectively, um, well, certainly to aid themselves heading through this race. It's going to be really, really fast to see how this pays off for them. Alex Gillen still leading the charge though as things stand. Danny Berezne just whipping his way through that chicane coming round towards campus and very soon round Stavolo. He is currently clocking every move that Steve Brown makes. Wants to drill another hole into that quadrant car and will have every chance of doing just that. Of course Barry Burman has already dispatched both quadrant cars and worked his way up into P2 and I'm sure he'd like his teammates to do exactly the same. Yeah, Burman absolutely flying, I've got to say. I've seen a lot of track extending so far. I don't think Michael Massey would be too pleased about it, but who cares? It's squad sprint. It's brilliant. It's what we love to see. The drivers giving it a go and pushing the limits, as you'd expect. I would say the eSports guys probably pushing it more than the others, but we've got Nathan Teague in the pits already. A very, very, very early pit stop from the Quadrant Man, and his glory run in the top few places is over for now. Let's see where he can rejoin. Will he rejoin in clean air? You wouldn't think so, given how close the field it still is. We've got two Yassit cars side by side in the first corner and uh, that looks like Eamon Murphy putting a move on Capuccia as they go down towards Eau Rouge and at the foot of Eau Rouge it looks like it's Murphy still in front as they go side by side up the hill and they're going side by side once again. I've seen so much side by side action in this part of the track so far and Capuccia is going to have a look to try and go round the outside. Can he do it then? Oh, and Eamon Murphy, that's a good move right round the outside. The two Yas Heat cars in battle, and he comes straight back through. Oh, and Eamon Murphy, awesome stuff between those two. Good teamwork, good action. Yeah, absolutely superb there from the Italian driver. He made it work, certainly heading through Lecom. No team orders here on Squad Sprint. Despite it being a team event, these drivers really want to do the best they can for themselves as well. As we now see Barry Burraman, who is now looking for a chance at this lead. He's got Alex Gillen dead ahead of him now as they come up towards what will be the final couple of bends in, well, before they reach bus stop. And now you can now see oh. Barry Burraman right on the spoiler of that all-star car. Alex Gillen might have not got a choice here, but to let P1 go to the to the flying Iranian, that being Barry Burraman as they round the bus stop chicane. Still Alex Gillen on top, but they've got to make this long dash down towards the source. And indeed, you can now see Barry Burraman in the mix. He is certainly trying to lay a hammer blow here on Alex Gillen. Alex Gillen could hold on at least for now, heading round the source, but I get a feeling his number might be up here, Andy, when they make their way up through the Kemmel Strait. 
Absolutely. The Persian has got the power down and he's pushing hard behind Alex Gillen as they make their way through Eau Rouge and up the hill once again, just like every other lap we've seen so far. We've seen action of plenty down this straight and it's like candy from a baby. It's as easy as that. He breezes alongside and will surely edge ahead as they reach the breaking zone. Not quite Alex Gillen putting up a real fight here, but Barry Burman into the breaking zone. Gets it done. Oh no! What a shame for Alex Gillen. He spins off and out of contention. Engine. That's such a shame. He put in such a fantastic opening stint to this race and he now drops all the way down the order as far as fifth and we're on board with him now and he's got Simon Vigan on his tail. But that's a shame for Alex Gillen, isn't it? Yeah, we'll have to obviously see how that's going to affect him. Obviously, damage could still be applied on these cars. We're now seeing him behind as well. Simon Vigang looking to stamp his authority on this field as well. Of course, Simon, uh, very much a stalwart in, uh, in eSports. Very, very talented driver. And uh, his, his talents, I'm sure, will be very much required here for this Alfa Romeo team as they now round the next year. and is a quadrant car off the track. That's Steve Brown, who has ventured off the circuit. Not ideal at all. And that's another quadrant car winding its way down towards the back end of the, of the top 10. Uh, as we're now witnessing Alex Gillen trying to recover uh, after his little situation earlier at Lake Com. I call it a little situation. It looked like a pretty major one to me uh, after he slammed into the wall. And then behind you can see Simon Vigang not far away. Looks like he's dropping back though, Andy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Alex Kelly. He's been really strong. It's such a shame he's had that moment. As we've got Courtois in the thick of it again, as Nathan Teague making his way through the traffic, having made that pit stop. And I did say that would not be an ideal time to make a stop with the field still so tightly packed. But nonetheless, he's not interested in that. He's gone flying past Thibaut Courtois and into the braking zone. Courtois goes deep. Huis goes through. Perhaps even uh, Tobin Lee as well going through. And he has gone through. And Courtois has uh, chosen to dive into the pitch. But uh, Nathan Teague losing valuable time. Uh, negotiating the traffic but he's now in clean air five seconds worth of it before he chases down Eamon Murphy further up the road so Nathan Tate cleared the traffic let's see where he is when everyone makes those pit stops it's lap six now out of 14 here at Spa we've had plenty of action in the opening few laps it's Barry Burramand in the lead but a special mention once again the content creator Tom Martinez is right in the thick of it and at this stage we're at the halfway point of the season after this race there's no doubt about it he's in this championship hunt to stay yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tom Martinez, he's, he's a big-time player, likes to do it at the, 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 certainly the traditional F1 circuits. Remember, he got the victory at Silverstone, of course, and uh, certainly was a very proud moment for the Veloce team. Uh, they're currently lying in P2 under Martinez's banner right now, and certainly trying to let fly here on Barry Burraman. That time is coming down, cascading down, in fact. It's down to 2.4 seconds, and he's really doing his best to try and hammer home on Barry Burraman. But there you can see Tobin Lee after moving up slightly, heading around the stop chicane earlier on and as they make their way around Puon, Toby Lee will be looking to do exactly the same this time on Bono Huis but Huis has got his own problems, he's got Nathan Tague in front of him, we all know about Nathan Tague, never underestimate that man in the Quadrant car, he has been sensational this season, very much flying the flag for Team Quadrant and uh, he's done it well as well as they head around this next right hander, you can now see Bono Huis, ever venomous there, the F1 sportsman for the Mercedes team, looking to do the business here at Spa, he's just tracking what looks to be Nathan Tague now who is starting to loom up on the front wing of Bono Huis. You can see that he's replayed this move over and over again without a shadow of a doubt. Bono Huis looking for the gap. Finds it on the outside. Can he get it done through bus stop? Tries to take the outside line. Great stern defending there from Nathan Tegg. Oh. Exquisite. A little hampering effort there. Indeed from Bono Huis has opened the door potentially for Tobin Lee heading around the source. And we have a battle going on in behind as well with what looks to be uh, I believe that's uh, G Hayden Gullis in the background. I think he's under a little bit of stress too, Andy. Yeah, all sorts of action here. Interestingly, James Baldwin still down in 15th place at this stage of the race. Not what you would expect. And presuming he got involved in that mayhem on the opening lap. But incredible. That could open the championship right back up with him having two uh, victories. But here we go, side by side. That's Bono Huis putting a move, I think, on Tobin Lee, is it? Side by side, they go into the corner and Bono Huis on the inside is ahead of Tobin Lee. So he's up to 10th and down to 11th goes Tobin Lee on his debut in the season. So we've also got a debutant, of course, and Steve Brown, he's making his debut as well in the Quadrant Car, replacing Arif uh, this afternoon. And both drivers so far putting on a good show, but Tobin Lee looks really keen to try and move up the order. Next up on his radar, well, Huis has just overtaken him, <laughs> but... Uh, Let's see how he gets on. We're at halfway stage, lap 7 out of 14. 
I'd imagine he's still very much on his radar. I have to say, Andy, I think you're spot on. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Toby Lee doesn't want to let that go as they head around the outset of the chicane, heading down towards the right-handers. And uh, you can now see him behind as well, uh, Capocha, uh, who has looked, uh, looked pretty promising as well for the Yassi team. He's all over the back of, indeed, Tobin Lee, as we're now uh, looking at the tail fin of Nathan Teg, who has got Bono Huis right in behind him here. Bono Huis fresh after making that move on Tobin Lee, now looking to do the same on Nathan Tay. Quadrant currently have both cars in the top 10. P's 8 and 9, Steve Brown representing them, as well as Nathan Tay. And unfortunately, you've obviously got, um, uh, I believe you've got Niran Yusufu down in P18 as well. So he's got quite a lot of work to do, as we're now seeing Eamon Murphy now tracking Danny Moreno. Now, of course, we've seen Danny Moreno right in the thick of it from the start of this race as they head up through the initial bends, of course, this being Eau Rouge heading up towards Radion and then up through Kemmel. And uh, now you can see Eamon Murphy looking to try and gather himself yet another position. Can he get himself up into P6? That is the big question here. They've done it so many times at Lake Common. Oh. Diving move down the inside. Absolutely scintillating there from Eamon Murphy. Very controlled. Majestic. It's absolutely superlative manoeuvre and that will certainly aid their progress heading up this grid. Oh, I loved that there. That was absolutely fantastic. You know, a lot of the moves down that street have been, oh, that's a big moment for Moreno. He's in the wall. He's bouncing off the track, going through no name and that is a disaster for the Mercedes man and he'll drop behind the debutant, uh, Steve Brown and uh, Super GT flies past up into seventh place but a lapse of concentration from Moreno perhaps spooked by that move from Murphy and he drops down another place behind Steve Brown and down to eighth but just going back to that that was great stuff from Murphy I really enjoyed that uh, the, the DRS has appeared a bit easy a bit overpowerful the slipstream down that straight but uh, that was one occasion where it had the two cars side by side in the braking zone and Murphy made the most of it and now we're going to Murphy's teammate Yaroslav Honzik who's running in fifth and he's hunting down Simon Van gang on lap 8 out of 14. Just a quick note folks, almost everyone in the field starting the race on hard tyres and that's a theme throughout the season you will see it will be late pit stops before they move to the mandatory soft tyre so pit stops will come towards the end of the race. Yeah, okay, as you can imagine, the uh, drivers actually uh, looked at that as the optimal route uh, into strategy in these races in squad sprint. As you can now see, Yaroslav Honzik getting a lovely exit out of the source as he makes his way up towards Eau Rouge now. And we've seen many overtakes happening on the Kemmel Strait. As you can now see, Simon Vigang under a lot of jeopardy. Yas Heat has been very, oh. very good this season and a very near miss indeed for uh, Simon Vigang and very nearly losing it. Heading up the straight as they make their way up towards Lake Com. Now, here here comes Yaroslav Honzik down the inside heading into Lake Coma. Once again, a Yassi car gets it done going into that all-stacious series of bends. Absolutely scintillating stuff again from the Yassi team. And Yaroslav Honzik, I'm sure, will be delighted with that. And uh, once again, they're up a place. Uh, they have got cars, two cars currently in the top 10. Uh, two cars, in fact, in the top six, Andy. Yeah, they're doing really well here, aren't they? They're... Uh flying along and it's going to make the team's championship very very interesting isn't it come the end of this race as I've said so many times folks we, we really want to put the focus on the team championship this year so if you're watching let us know in the comment section be sure to tune in in the Veloci Twitter account as well give that a follow and let us know who you're cheating on in the, the Veloci flagship series the squad sprint because you know it's what we're all talking about here at Veloci and it's good to see so many teams in contention for the championship and uh, you know so many drivers in there as well and the man we're watching right now Tom Martin is as I keep saying as a uh, right in the mix for that championship and he's really flying the flag for the Veloci team as well running in second place at the minute he's got Beresny behind and he's in good form too two alpha cars in the top three places two out three alpha cars in the top five and Martinez is coming into the pits now we've got Bruremand in the pits too so there's gonna be no undercut or overcut on this occasion between the two leaders they're both coming in and they're both gonna set put a set of soft tires on this and run to the end so if Martinez wants to make the move it won't be in the pits it'll need to be on the track yeah, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be a stiff contest towards the end of this race. Four laps remain now, folks. Lap 10 of 14 here at Spa. As Barry Burman now ventures his way out of the pit lane, here's, Tom, uh, here's, uh, here's Alex Gillen uh, making his way down the stretch, leading down towards La Source. And uh, indeed, the All-Star car is going to look to do the business here. He needs to try and close up the gap, certainly. Um, trying to, uh, obviously, try and go overcut a lot of these cars who are currently exiting the pit lane, or undercutting, shall I say, as uh, he tries to make his way around the outside of Yaroslav Honzik. 
Kubik, who now has fresh tyres on. Now, what sort of a difference will this make? Yas Heat certainly have seemed prudent on this long stretch leading up towards Lake Com. As you can now see them, Yaroslav Honzik now going wheel to wheel, this time with Alex Gillen. And certainly the All Star car is going to be under a different kind of pressure now because as they make their way up towards Lake Com, Yas Heat have been so prudent going through this Lake Com bends, and he's done it. Absolutely tremendous stuff. The Yas Heat car up, to, up again another place. And uh, I have to say, things looking ever so good for them right now, especially now they've got fresh rubber on. What they got in the back of that car? It's a rocket ship. They're absolutely <laughs> flying, aren't they? And uh, there you go. Through goes Yanislav Honzik. As easy as that. And up into sixth position. Alex Gellin down to seventh. Interestingly, I noticed there that Nathan Tig had been through the pit lane again. So I uh, don't know if he's been involved in an incident somewhere. James Baldwin, by the way, winner of the last two races, still only down in 12th position. Meanwhile... We've got Tom Martinez, fresh from that pit stop, keen to make up for lost time because he's now even further behind Barry Burman and he's had to follow Bono Quis through the middle sector of the lap. But he won't be following much longer because as they go through, Blanchimon, he's breezed himself alongside, side by side they go. And as they hit the apex of Blanchimon, he is through ahead of Bono Quis and up into fourth position. And that will become second as Beresney and Vigang are both going through the pit lane. You would think they anyway. Wouldn't. Well, yeah, absolutely, you would think so. And uh, as you can now see, Burraman currently in front, albeit now Martinez now making his way up through the grid order and indeed does claim that second place, as you so rightly said, Andy. Now rounding La Source on the outset. Now you can just see the Alfa Romeo in the distance cruising uh, up towards what will be Eau Rouge. I say cruising, he's probably putting his foot down and laying down pedal to the metal indeed. As you can now see, Berezne coming out into P3. So Alfa Romeo in a very strong position. P's 1, 3 and 5. And uh, surely if that's the pattern at the end of the race, they're going to be delighted with the finish. Yeah, they'll be absolutely overjoyed with that. I mean, it's been an average start for them so far, hasn't it? I mean, Beresney, who's won the last two squad sprint seasons, don't forget, doesn't have a point in the board yet, for goodness sake, but he's certainly going to change that here. I mean, with it being such a short format, I mean, I think his championship chances are already gone. It's all about helping the team now, isn't it? Really. But uh, let's pick up Steve Brown, who's having a fine debut out there on the racetrack, having a better debut than Tobin Lee is, let's say, and uh, he's uh, running along really nicely, and he's hunting down Eamon Murphy for what would be seventh place. Yassi also having a solid afternoon so far, Honzik in fourth, Murphy in seventh, and uh, Kaposha running in P10 as well on his debut, so at the minute it's Steve Brown, the lead debutant uh, in squad sprint this season, so he's having a really good race, but Let's see if he can make a move. We've got quite a group of cars here, don't we? We've got Alex Gillen in there. We've, we've, we've got five different cars, don't we? Five different constructors. All in there. These five places all stuck together on the road. And, you know, that's 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 what Squad Sprint's all about. We've got an All-Star in there. We've got a Veloci car, a Yas Heat car, a Quadrant car, and a Mercedes car, I think, at the tail there as well. It's absolutely brilliant. And we've got... Who's that dropping out and running wide? Was that one of the... Uh, Veloci cars moving out of the way, I think. Not too sure, but Steve Brown running in eighth place and attacking Eamon Murphy, but not quite close enough for a move. But you feel, uh, George, maybe down the straight towards the Comey will have an opportunity, but maybe not because Alex Gillen will give a slipstream to Murphy in front. We tend to find that the battles um, tend, to ha tend to happen on the Camel Straight. I don't think they quite get the same sort of pace uh, that they do heading down towards the source that, like, than they do uh, going up the Camel Straight. So it's interesting to note, just watching some of these cars head out through the last few laps, where the key overtakes have been made. Certainly Lacom has been the poignant point, as uh, we're now seeing Alex Gillen now at the mercy uh, of Eamon Murphy. Now Eamon Murphy's going to be pulling on a couple of cars himself here as uh, they make their way up this long straight. You can see there's Steve Brown in the midst too, Ooh. and Danny Moreno. And we got a, we got a wheel-to-wheel -wheel here once again and, and like you say what are they eating uh, the Yassi cars because currently Eamon Murphy just motoring his way through the field now we know they're very com competent certainly in endurance and GT racing but put them in um, certainly uh, the, the formula cars they are absolutely tremendous they've been absolutely brilliant this season yeah, I think they've got a GT engine in the back as well as a Formula engine. I think they've got the two of them in there. Some extra horsepower. They're absolutely flying down the straights. And Eamon Murphy plowing along nicely in seventh place at the minute. I mean, I know the Alpha guys are going to put a serious dent 
uh, on the championship standings. But I'll tell you what, these uh, Yassi lads, they're not doing too bad a damage limitation job, are they, George? They're, they're doing a really good job of levelling the scores up and making sure it's not too big a dent from Team Alpha. I mean, Tom Martinez, he's, he's doing a sensational job as well in the Veloci car to ensure that he gets a lot of points as well. So Alex Gillen, too, for the All-Stars, might be putting the, uh, the uh, Quadrant team back on the front row of the grid next week. Because here we go, side by side, Eamon Murphy round the outside of Alex Gillen. Here we go through Blanchimont. That's absolutely epic stuff. And he's going to get the move done down the straights again. Eamon Murphy in that Yasit car is an absolute rocket. And he flies past Gillen inside, outside, doesn't matter. Through he goes. And we've got a spin in the background. And that is Steve Brown round the wrong way. P presumably a collision between he and Danny Moreno. But what about that, Yasit? And what about that move, George? Round the outside through Blanchimont. God, he didn't make that easy for him, did he? Alex Gillen pretty much cut off the easy access. Eamon Murphy not scared to make the key moves when they count. And certainly heading down the inside at bus stop is not ideal because although you may get the ideal line going into the corner on the outset, it's a very different story. He had to take the wider line and still got the move done. I have to say that's probably one of the moves of the day for me. Absolutely epic stuff. And we've seen quite a few certainly heading around Lake Com as we're now about to see these trailer drivers make their way through. Danny Moreno being one of them, just clocking every move that could Poacher makes now, looking to get one back on this very, very charismatic Yas Heat team, who have certainly been lighting things up here at Spa. It's been absolutely brilliant to see, and I, they do have their followers, they do have their fans, and I know that the team would be overjoyed at having a positive result here as they're round through no name, running on board with Danny Moreno. Just look how quick they're rounding some of these bends under the squad sprint banner oh. now, heading down through the next left-hander, round Puon, brushing the curbs, Danny Moreno. It's been a scintillating race, and we've only got a lap or so remaining left, Andy. I, I almost don't want it to end. Yeah, it's been really enjoyable, isn't it? Action aplenty. We've got Steve Brown there. I don't know if you noticed in the background going, is, uh, going down the street towards Puhon. was bun bundling off the road and through the grass. He's lost out to Nathan Teig and Emily Jones. And he's now down in 14th place. But this is where the action is. We've got Moreno on the attack and having a look at uh, Kaposha. Can he get through then as they go down towards uh, Blanchimont once again? There'll be no crazy manoeuvres round the outside like Murphy. And for once, a Yassit car's been overtaken in a straight line. Round the outside goes Moreno. On the inside holding his line is Kapucha and he holds the position and holds on to that eighth position. Moreno trying everything he can as he start the final lap here in Belgium. What a race it's been and Burnhamad's got it safe out front but it's all about this at the minute as the two Mercedes cars, the dark shadows that they are are lining up and ready to attack Kapusha on his debut. Yeah, certainly these eSport guys know how to do it when it counts. They do it every day in the F1 eSports Pro Series. And here they go again. Danny Moreno on the rear end of Capocha now. Takes the inside line as they make their way up past the DRS line. Heading up through the long straight leading up towards Lake Calm. And I'm sure the Mercedes is going to do exactly what they've always done. As we're also seeing what looks to be Alex Gillen at the mercy of Simon Weigang. Or is he the other way around as Moreno capitalizes? Heading around Lake Calm. Absolutely brilliant stuff that you want to see in the final lap. It looks like his teammate's going to follow him through. Bono who he's getting cut off at the last moment. Tries to look down the inside but cannot oh. find an entrance. Oh my word. And indeed Capocha gets spun indeed. A little left tap there from Bono who he sends him round and that certainly will not help Capocha. He dropped down to P12 and now 13 Andy. Heartbreaking look stuff. Look at this. Tom Martin is, is absolutely flowing on this final stint of the race and he's now only 7 tenths behind Barry Bunneman. Unfortunately for him we're on the final lap but I don't think he's going to get close enough. Unbelievable pace again from Tom Martinez, but I think it's just too little, too late. And as they come round the final part of the lap, it looks like it's going to be Barry Buramand that's going to take the victory. A first victory of the season for him, a first victory of the season for Alpha as they come round the final corner. And Alpha Romeo and Barry Buramand get their first win of the season. It's he, the Iranian, that takes victory from a brilliant Tom Martinez once again. It's a double podium though with Danny Beresney in third. What a finish to that race with Honzik in fourth but it's showing Honzik ahead of Berzny now. I think that's just the timings. Ignore that as they all go and do some donuts down at La Source but that's a fine victory for Barry Burnham and Tom Martinez once again 
showing some great pace, wasn't he? Let's have a look then at the results from the uh, Grand Prix here in Spa, round four of the championship. We're at the halfway stage now. It's Barry Burraman that took the victory uh, and the fastest lap as well, crucially, uh, ahead of Tom Martinez in second. Danny Beresnik completes a double podium for Alpha with Yaroslav Honzik in fourth and Eamon Murphy fifth. So fourth and fifth, that's a good effort there for the Yas Heat team. Simon Weigang sixth, that's three Alphas in the top six places. That's a fine result. Danny Moreno seventh with Bono Huis eighth for Mercedes. Alex Gillen ninth and James Baldwin rounding out the top ten. The bottom half of the order outside the points. Nathan Teague eleventh. Emily Jones was twelfth. Andrea Kaposia was in thirteenth. Steve Brown fourteenth with Thibaut Courtois fifteenth. He was involved in a lot of action early on. We'd never seen Hayden Gullis. He was sixteenth in the end with Tobin Lee in seventeenth. Neren came home 18th, Maxim Bymans with 19th and Louis Deltraz, the only car not to see the flag. Let's have a look then at the driver standings, George. Yeah, driver's championship is as it is right now. James Baldwin, 64 points, currently spearheads the, the lead in the championship. Tom Martinez in P2 after a great performance here today, landing him second place. Eamon Murphy in P3 as well on 48 points. A point behind him, Barry Burramand after that win today. That certainly did help his championship credentials. He's currently up in P4. Yana Watmir wasn't here today, unfortunately. Uh, only a two-legged Mercedes team but he's on 37 points P5 to his name Yaroslav Honzik P6 32 points again Yas Heat's driver very very good today Bono Huis in P7 26 points Danny Moreno in P8 on 24 points Simon Weigang P9 on 20 points and Nathan Tegg P10 with 16 points that rounds off your top 10 of the championship and onwards to the uh, the team's championship there Andy yeah, let's have a look at those that team standings here. And it really is hotting up in the team battle. And as we said during the broadcast, we want you guys to really back your team in the squad sprint this season. And you need they need your backing because every point is crucial. Look at those standings. Mercedes at the top on 87 points, just four clear of Yas Heat on 83. We've got McLaren Shadow on 80 and that incredible showing from Alfa Romeo Racing, moving them up to 75. We have got 12 points covering the top four at the halfway stage. Veloce, a lot of the work done, if not all of it, by Tom Martinez up till now on 55 points. They're having a fine season to be fair. Then a big gap back, Team Quadrant on 16 points and the All-Stars on 12 and that means of course that they will start the next race at the front of the grid once again but that runs off the order now it's time to go and talk about our driver of the day George we love to do that every week who are you going to go for on this occasion I think without question Barry Burramand uh, after an incredible start Alfa Romeo certainly did have a great day today but I think the one man that did peak out of the best uh, or well, certainly out of all of them uh, the best was certainly Barry Burramand the moves he made to get himself up into P1 a very tough grid there today overtakes going through certainly the Oru section not ideal but he managed to make it happen and uh, I think he certainly deserves driver of the day here today okay yeah I would agree with that Barry Burramand once again, we all agree in the commentary box for driver of the day. I have to agree with you there. But as we always say, it's not about us. It's about what you guys think. Be sure to head over to the Veloci Esports Twitter account to cast your vote for driver of the day. And of course, let us know in the comment section below who are you backing for the season ahead for the remaining four races. Who do you want to win the championship in the teams and the drivers? But that's all from myself, Ginger Andy, and from George. It's... Uh, time for round number five of the championship next week but beyond halfway the battle is heating up be sure to join us same time next week goodbye